Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to bring you guys a guide on how to build Melia and Ricky as a team. Melia and Ricky both have damage over time spells that do a ton of damage. If you are able to use the chain attack efficiently, then they are able to burn through most enemies in the game. In this guide, I am going to go over their gems, art, skill tree builds, and how to efficiently chain their abilities. Additionally, I will be talking about the third person that you should run on the team. This guide is focused more towards the later portion of the game, with an emphasis on bossing. The first person in our party is Melia. She is the character that the player will be controlling. Because her AI isn't great, and a person must control her to get the most out of her kit. Melia, in a sense, is a glass cannon. She is the squishiest character in the game, but she also has the potential to do the most damage. Melia is probably the most unique character to play, and that is because of the way her arts work. Most of our arts are summons that grant an aura. You can cast these summons with Elemental Discharge to release the element. Discharging an element will stack up her talent art. When her talent art fully charges up, she does double the damage on her spells. Additionally, she has a topple where she doesn't need anyone to break the enemy. This surprisingly works on all super bosses and is extremely useful for toppling enemies outside of a chain attack. Her most important arts are Summon Earth, Summon Ice, Summon Lightning, Summon Copy, Spear Break, Starlight Kick, and Burst End. I will briefly go over each art and what their main purpose is. Her other arts are also great, but I will not be going over them as they are not part of this build. Summon Lightning is a spell that grants Aether as an aura. It is a single target nuke with a very short cooldown. The Aether aura synergizes very well with Melia's kit. Summon Earth applies a defensive aura on your team. When casted, it is the strongest single target damage over time spell in the game. It is Melia's bread and butter for taking down bosses. Summon Ice is a spell that grants an Aether Defense Aura. It is an AoE spell that has a much shorter damage over time duration, but does a bit more damage per tick. It does decent damage and is a part of the chain combo. Summon Copy copies her previous spell, useful for stacking spells up quickly. Spear Break is a physical attack that sets up for Starlight Kick. Starlight Kick is a forced topple when used right after Spear Break. When used in conjunction with each other, this is a deadly combo. Burst End is a spell that lowers the enemy's ether defense, extremely good for ether based teams. These arts are the arts that I use generally when bossing. She has other great arts such as Summon Flare or Mind Blast, but they are generally used when farming a mob of enemies. Next up, we are going to go over her equipment. The most important gear that Melia needs are the Master Glasses and the Sun Staff. The rest of her equipment could just be any gear that has an open gem slot. Just make sure that it has decent defense on it. In the weapons gem slot, we are going to run Poison Plus and Chill Plus as our main gems. The third gem is usually safe for Topple Plus for Topple Locking. Topple Locking is decent on Melia because she can force topples on most enemies with her Spear Break and Starlight Kick combo. If you are not bossing, then Blaze Plus is probably the best third option for her gem slot. There may be cases where you might have to run Night Vision over Topple Plus or Chill Plus. This is because Melia does have some trouble with accuracy problems against super bosses in the game. Her best skill tree is generally going to be Reliability. This is because one of her skills, called Playing with Poison, increases the duration of her Poison Damage Over Time skill by 15 seconds. It additionally also has a skill that increases her Aether by 25 points. This skill tree is best for bossing. I would recommend the Serenity Tree or the Passion Tree if you're looking to use her AoE spells. Her skill links are quite straightforward. For the most part, she wants to stack Aether. Charla has two skills called Aether Expansion and Aether Explosion. These are great for Melia and exactly what she needs to do even more damage. Next, we need to increase our chances of more chain attacks. Chain attacks are the bread and butter in this build, so without it, then Melia will struggle a lot. Shulk's Chain of Friendship is exactly what we need. Ryan also has the skill Ties of Friendship that will increase the chain attack chance as well. Explosion of Energy synergizes extremely well with Melia's kit. It is incredibly overpowered on her because she likes to spam her talent art often. This makes it that her tension is easily maxed out at the beginning of the battle. When a character has high tension, they will do 20% more damage during chain attack and on top of that has a higher crit chance as well. Lastly, we top it off with whatever else we need. Dunban's Link allows us to have zero weight on our equipment, and Shulk's ultimate teamwork allows us to do more damage during chain attacks. Ricky is a very weird character. The very best way for me to describe him is a magical support bruiser. He's kinda a jack of all trades. 
This doesn't mean he's subpar by any means. In fact, he does top tier damage and heals a lot. Ricky has an arsenal of arts at his disposal. His most important arts, in my opinion, are Lurgy, Freezenate, Burninate, Happy Happy, You Can Do It, and Hero Time. I will also mention Roly Poly because it's a skill needed to continue the chain in our team composition. His physical arts are rather lackluster but are useful in keeping chains going. I will briefly go over each one. Lurgy is a cone-shaped AoE spell that poisons the enemy. It's great for mobbing. Freezenate is a single target nuke that applies chill. It is a decent spammable move. Burninate is Ricky's bread and butter skill. It does tons of damage and is an AoE spell. Definitely one of Ricky's best arts. Happy Happy increases the party meter when tension is high. Very useful for stacking the party meter outside of battle. You Can Do It is an aura that prevents your team from losing tension. Extremely valuable because tension is so important for increasing damage. Hero Time is an AoE heal in a cone. It is very good when it's leveled up because the cooldown becomes a lot shorter and it heals a ton. Lastly, there's Roly Poly. Honestly, this art is really bad, but is used in this build to help chain links together. These skills, in my opinion, are the best skills that Ricky has. For Ricky's weapon of choice, I picked up Comet Biter due to the high crit and block chance. For the equipment, I usually go for all light armor with the gem slots available. In his weapon gem slots, I run Blaze Plus and Topple Up as his core gems. Blaze Plus will double the damage on Burninate, and Topple Up will increase his damage while enemies are toppled. The last slot is usually safe for aggro down, but can be swapped out for whatever is needed. Although Ricky does have the highest base HP in the game, he is still rather squishy. That is the reason why we run the aggro down gems. It is important that Ricky stays alive because he is our healer, and he also grants the aura that prevents us from lowering our tension. In Ricky's armor gem slots, we need two ether up gems. The rest should go into defensive options. Since Ricky has such high base HP, he works well with physical protect or ether protect. As always, adjust the gems based on the situations you are facing. Ricky doesn't have the greatest skill tree for combat. I usually go with Cowardice for the lower cooldown during the nighttime, as well as the additional block chance. Heroism can also be a great choice if you want a higher crit chance. The most important skills that Ricky needs are skills that increase his ether value. Ultimate Ether and Ether Awareness from Melia are good candidates. Equip Ether Explosion and Ether Expansion from Sharla as well. Next, top it off with Shulk's Chainlink skills as well as Rhine's. Lastly, we have an Aura Increase skill from Dunban. These are the most important skills to link on Ricky. The rest of the points can go into whatever fits the situation. For example, if you need Spike Resistance, then you can link the skill from Dunban. The last character on our list will be Dunban. I will briefly go over my build for Dunban in this composition. Dunban in this comp is going to work as a drain tank. Keep in mind this is a very short overview of what Dunban can do. For arts, the two most important arts we will need on him are Tempest Kick and Steel Strike. These will be essential for our chain link. As with all equipment, we put the best one you got. Wyvern Cutlass is considered Dunban's best in slot weapon. For weapon gems, I am running double attack, topple plus, and aggro up. For armor gems, I am running HP+, plus, recovery up, agility, and the rest depends on what you need. For the skill tree, we will be running prudence for the crit heals. For skill links, we want critical combo from 7 to turn all double attacks into crits. Add on more double attacks with Rhine's skill. All the additional double attacks will synergize very well because all the double attacks will start healing Dunman due to the force crit procs. Now we finish it off with more chances to increase chain links. Alright, now that we are done with the character builds, let's get into the combo. The combo is not the highest damage output that Melee can dish out, but it's probably the most consistent combo. I will show a chart of how the combo will look like in this picture. Feel free to pause to look at the combo. First of all, you should always have an elemental charge ready to go before facing a boss. After that, make sure to use Ricky to charge up the party meter before initiating an attack. Whenever facing a super boss, make sure to equip the necessary gems. For the Ancient Daedala, I make sure to bring Topple Plus on all my characters because it is extremely weak to topple. The Ancient Daedala always starts out the fight with a laser, so make sure your party can take at least one shot. Always start off with Lightning, Earth, and Ice. Once we have those spells queued up, we can now start fighting the boss. The combo starts off with me using Summon Ice to get my Elemental Burst, then I will use Summon Copy to get it back up. Follow that up with the Spear Break. Now we can start a Chain Attack and topple the enemy with Starlight Kick. We follow that up with a Roly Poly, then Steel Strike. 
When we get back to Melia, we want to use our first elemental discharge, which is ice. The spell will have a 4 times chain multiplier. Next, Ricky will use Burninate with a 5 times chain modifier. Following that is Tempest Kick from Dunban. Then finally, we have Melia use her elemental discharge. This will poison the enemy with a 5 times chain modifier. Anything after this is just additional damage on top. Do not use Lurgy or Freezenate to override Melia's spells. Once the chain finishes, you can continue to top lock the enemy or you can just kite around till the enemy faints. Now that we have seen what kind of damage that our team can dish out, let's talk about the weakest point. Melia has terrible accuracy, and this team also requires a ton of good RNG. Melia struggles against the strongest super boss in this game. Her spear kick combo misses a lot, even with night vision and agility gems. The boss does a ton of damage, so she will easily get one shot. When she is ran on point, the team relies on her to get the initial topple to start top blocking the opponent. Even against Blizzard Belgazis, I had to run Night Vision Gem over top of Plus to get the initial hit off. There are ways to supplement the problem, but it will cost her some damage. In conclusion, this team is a ton of fun to use. It has its weak side, but it also deals a ton of damage. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching!